All right, so in today's lab, what we actually did was a complex carb investigation on starch. So after you've read the introduction, answered your pre-lab questions, and after you've done the first column, which is the predictions, and we'll show you that right here. If you're just gonna do the predictions, just figure out yes or no, positive or negative, whether you think based on what you read, whether or not those materials have starch. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna watch the rest of this video, then you're gonna see some of the results when reacted with iodine. Now, iodine is a material that's used, uh, for example, as an antiseptic. If you go and get a, uh, let's say an IV, or you get, or let's say you have surgery, what's gonna happen is they're gonna rub some of that on there to destroy any microscopic organisms and bacteria that might be on your skin before they inject you with a needle or insert that IV. So it's in the same group in the periodic table as chlorine and fluorine, which also do very similar properties to you know, destroy bacteria. So iodine by itself, if we just move these out of the way, iodine by itself has what's known as an amber color. So we see this yellow reddish brown that's left over uh, from the iodine. Now, a positive test for iodine and starch is a black reaction or a black color, a darker color. And so if we take this sample and we put it on the paper towel, the paper turns a darker color, almost like a dark black, okay? And so that's what we're looking for when we actually do the test, is that dark color in the food. If it turns dark or if it is left with that like yellow, reddish, brown color, then that would not be an indicator of much starch being present. But if it turns black, then we actually have a lot of starch that's present. So the samples that we're gonna go through here, no particular order on the plate, but you know we're, we'll follow through when we get them on the actual uh, chart. For example, we have sugar, we have flour, we have mango, we have banana, we have potato, we have a graham cracker, we have a piece of bread, we have rice, and we have a uh, Sour Patch Kid. And in the middle, we have romaine lettuce instead of spinach, we have a carrot, and we have a slice of apple. And so, again, take a minute right now, if you need to pause the video, take a minute and go through and actually do your predictions to see which one each will do. And what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna run through them right now, just so we have this available for those that have missed the lab and wanna catch up or, or even have a, as a review to see what had happened. So we're gonna go through, I'll try to follow the order and move them as we go through. So the first one on the lab is bread. So and what we're gonna look for again is like instant, okay? We're gonna see if there's any instant changes. And so in the bread, Kind of hard to squeeze these tubes because they're getting old. If you notice, that instantly turns very dark. Okay, so that instantly turned dark just like the paper towel. So, again, we said if there is a positive or excuse me, if there's a change to black, that's usually a positive result for that material. Okay, so. Again, in the third column, or second and third columns, you'd write whether it turned black or whether it actually stayed amber. And then if it turns black, that would be a yes for the last column. If it turns amber or doesn't really, really change much, that would be a no. That would be an indicator that nothing is present. So that was bread. Okay, and the next one is flour. So I'll find the flour here. Notice again, we see some really dark color in that flower, okay? Now, the cup itself might change color, and we don't wanna focus on that. We wanna focus on just the material itself, but not the actual cup. And so as soon as this goes in, again, if you compare the color of the two, is it red, yellow, or is it black? That's definitely black. So that was flower. Our next one is the apple. And if you notice, the apple does not really change color, okay? It still stays that amber color. If we go back and compare the two, the apple to the bread, there's not much. But as it sits there, 
If you notice, it actually starts to darken up a little bit. There's still a lot of the red color. Notice the cup got black over here because that's a reaction to the cup, not red necessarily the apple. But you have to think about apples. Apples are sweet. And so there might be different parts of the apple that are a little sweeter than others. And so in general, we could kind of argue both ways, but if we really look at the color, there's a lot of amber there indicates that there's possibly sugars there, but maybe not a lot of starch. But because it is changing a little bit, we can also argue again that, it, that there are some starches there, but not as much as this or with the flour. It doesn't show up as prominently. It's just faded. So there is some starch in here, but just not as much as you would see, for example, in um, another material. Okay, so that was the apple. The next one is the banana. Okay, so we have banana pieces. Notice again, there's no instant change in our banana. Unlike the cup, the cup has some starch again in it. It's a paper product. So a lot of times paper products have this. Your clothing would often stain colors. Now, just like that apple, as that soaks in, we notice a little bit of the darkness showing up. Now you have to think about a banana. If you get a, a brand new banana from the store, oftentimes it's green. And what happens is that's a lot harder, it doesn't have as good of a taste, and the enzymes over the next few days break down the larger molecules. So we can argue that there is a little starch in there, <clears throat> excuse me, because there is some blackness, but not as much as you would see in the paper cup. And again, when we compare it to this, it didn't change. So this banana is ripe and it's a lot sweeter. And so again, this is mostly a different material, not as much starch present, but maybe there's a little hint of starch. Over here on the very tip of this banana, you can start to see um, on the edge a little bit of black because again, there's gonna be a little bit of starch left, but again, it isn't turning that instant black like we did <clears throat> with the other materials. All right, our next one is the potato. Our potato, notice, is a lot darker. If we compare that to the apple, the apple has started to get dark now because, again, it's had more time to soak in to show that there's a little more starch present, but the potato went right away, okay? You still see a little hint of the amber outside because it hasn't soaked into the potato itself, but this is a good indicator. Notice how it all went dark, and if we compare it to that apple, there's some starches in the apple, but, again, not as many here, so, again, we have another positive in the potato that has turned dark. Okay, our next one is table sugar. Okay, notice table sugar. Everything just staying amber. Okay, no turn to black because table sugar is a smaller molecule. Uh, this is likely sucrose. That's typically what your table sugar is. Sucrose is a small molecule. It's a, it's a disaccharide. And if you remember in the dehydration synthesis lab, we took molecules of glucose or a monosaccharide. We removed water. We did the dehydration part. And then we built them up to make a disaccharide such as sucrose. Those molecules we continue to build over and over and over again. And what happens is they end up becoming starch. Starch is a macromolecule. It's a huge molecule. So again, if you compare the colors to the two with the bread versus the sugar, sugar again is a small molecule. Starch is a bigger molecule. So again, they're going to show up different in this indicator test. So that was sugar. Our next one is Sour Patch Kid. This one, this one is really cool how this actually goes through and what happens. So I'm going to try to hit it correctly. And if we look... The Sour Patch Kid, we drip it on there, and notice it just spreads all the way through. Okay, so it's kind of cool how that actually works its way through that material, but notice again how fast that changed. It was instantly a different color. Now you think about candy a lot of times being, you know, sweet and having a lot of sugars. Yes, there's a lot of sugar on the outside, but that material on the inside is very heavy in starch. Okay, it's a lot of complex carbs in that gummy material versus maybe some of the sugars on the outside. So as soon as it went in and spread out, that's what you have. You have that change to that darker color. And again, if we compare that to our glucose, glucose still has that reddish amber color and the uh, Sour Patch Kid turned nice and dark. Our next one is labeled as spinach, but we substituted romaine lettuce. 
this is just kind of run off. So if you notice, still lightly colored, doesn't really change much. I know the lighting isn't great from this angle, but we're not having any black in there. It is mostly don't consider the black that's over here that's actually hitting the paper that's not on the actual leaf itself okay but the leaf really isn't turning any color if, if I move that off of the leaf notice it didn't change otherwise it would have changed color it's still that amber color so we have a amber color in our lettuce in this case again it was romaine lettuce instead of spinach our next one is the carrot I'm going to carefully put this on there just so it doesn't drip all over. And if we look close, it might be hard to see, there's just the faintest bit of black that occurs there. And a lot of this is just rolling off. So it didn't instantly turn like some of the other materials. Again, don't consider the paper, just look at this. So we can't rule out that there's no starch there, but for the most part, it's not really a very starchy material at this point, okay? We're not, we're not seeing, you know, instant change into black. Again, like our potato, if we take a look at our potato now, our potato has really turned dark, okay? So I'm gonna put this down, this is the potato. If we compare the potato to the apple, notice the apple has gotten darker, but the potato is really, really dark, showing a lot of uh, starch present. Okay, the apple has some present, the carrot, maybe if we came back to this again, really didn't turn dark black, but there's not as many starches. So again, maybe some of them have started to break down. It could be some of the other materials that, or they could have been some transfer from some of the other materials in the processing. But for the most part, the carrot is showing negative and not really much starch. Okay, we have rice. Okay, notice as soon as I do the rice, we're gonna to try to keep it on the rice and not get it on the paper, because we don't wanna indicate the paper there, but notice what happens to the color instantly, even though most of it's on the top. Those rice particles get darker, and they've shown a positive test. So again, we got a black color with our rice. Mango, we have some mango fruit. Notice the mango gets darker okay some of it runs off but notice that mango did get darker okay unlike some of the other materials the mango did get darker pretty well pretty quick so again high in starch okay that again when it turns black that means a positive test result for starch and then our last one everyone's favorite animal cracker and so if we take a look at the cracker put a couple drops on there notice again what happens to it okay just like the bread we started with we have a nice dark color okay so when we're looking at this you know the apple was questionable the banana if we still look at the banana i still see a lot of amber in there but i do see some black underneath so that was questionable the glucose or the sugar definitely a negative the leaf again don't worry about what you're seeing over here in this corner that's against the paper that's not the leaf itself definitely negative the carrot we're starting to see some coloration but for the most part it didn't we don't see the prominent black like we do on the actual other materials that have changed and again don't confuse that with the black on the bottom that's just touching the paper and so when we look at it at the end we end up with about five materials that were negative and we had uh, you know we're left with seven that are positive so what you should do at this point, again, verify your answers, and then you can continue and answer the rest of the lab and complete it to be turned in uh, as soon as you're done.